morning. Uh, this is Maceo. It is uh, Friday, um, June 26th. Uh, it is a beautiful day, a uh, beautiful morning. I'm looking outside and I'm seeing that the sun is starting to rise over the uh, over the tree horizon there. I've got this beautiful tree line across the street from me that I get to look out and uh, see the sunrise. And, uh, and it's, man, it's, it's captivating. Every morning I get to see that um, as it shines directly in my eyes. So it's always an interesting, uh, fun time that I have with, uh, with the sunlight. Um, but nonetheless, I am, I am incredibly grateful for it. Excuse me. Um, this is, of course, again, the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, there is gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Uh, into his courts with praise. Good morning, Sister Kelly. Um, this is the day that he's made. Uh, every day. You know, it's really a interesting scripture that says this is the day that the Lord has made. It's like, yeah, just like tomorrow <laughs> and the week after. Uh, so regardless as to what day it is, it's the day that the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice about that. Um, again, I, uh, I, I give you Hey, good morning, Sister Taylor. Uh, listen, um, Tay, God bless you guys, you and your sisters. Um, you did exactly what people of God should do. Uh, when you experience your brother or your sister, uh, take a hit. Uh, you guys stepped up and stepped in for uh, for Jasmine and Chrissy and Fred Jr. That right there, that's, that's the mark of a believer. Uh, stepping in, you see somebody else has took a similar hit and you say, I know what you're going through. I've been in that. That's that right there. That's what it's about. That is exactly what Christ did. It's exactly what he did. He went through it specifically so he could say, I know what it's like. I know what it's like when people come for you. I know what it's like. Go to glass. Good morning. And you guys, for y'all to have the, the gumption, the temerity to step in knowing that you're dealing with your own hurt because it wasn't too long ago where y'all had to be in that front row and for you guys to step in past your hurt and help somebody else comfort somebody else that's Christ like you want to know what Christ like is that keep doing that type of stuff God honors that God honors that. Uh, yeah, no, thank you guys. <laughs> I was so moved by that. And when I when I found out, honestly, when I found out that Pastor Fred had passed, um, you know, it, it, it was a hit, a hit to everybody. Uh, so for you guys to have stepped in there, man, just to see that beautiful thing, just young people, consoling young people, young adults consoling young adults in the fear and, and, and the wonder of God. It's amazing. So I honor you guys. Uh, Y'all are definitely uh, Nanny and April's kids because that type of compassion, man, that's, that's a handed down blessing. So I really honor you guys for that. Um, we're continuing with uh, the Beatitudes. Uh, I feel like this is something that constantly gets passed over because we like other blessings. You know, we talk about, you know, that's the God that will overtake you and the wealth of the wicked and so on and so forth. But we really don't have an understanding, a full understanding of these scriptures. And one that is commonly, one set of scriptures commonly uh, misunderstood are the Beatitudes. I talked about the Beatitudes a little bit Wednesday uh, in Bible study, but here I've been able to break down each scripture piece by piece and really explore uh, what it means to cross-reference it with other scriptures in both the Old and the New Testament. And that's been the goal. Uh, 
so people can get a greater understanding. Um, so let's let's recap here first. Let me pull back up. Uh, everything in regard to the Beatitudes is found in Matthew five. Oops. Thought I had my stuff pulled up here. Apparently not. I'm working on my laptop, my phone, and my desktop computer. That's all it's for. <laughs> so, again, in Matthew 5, you have a couple of things that happens even before Christ uh, teaches. Hey, Jill, good morning. Okay, so in Matthew 5, the first thing, notice in the first verse, it says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, when he was set, his disciples came unto him. That scripture should be used whenever teaching somebody to teach, <laughs> whenever teaching somebody ministry work. Don't do nothing until you're set. Don't do nothing, don't say nothing until you are set. And this, the longest sermon ever recorded by Christ came after he was set. After he was prepared. That's why he can successfully say, be instant. Do this thing in season, out of season. Because you're able to prepare. Just because it's the off season doesn't mean a basketball player loses all of his skill. He still has it because he's prepared for it. So Jesus right here took the time to set himself first before he began to minister. And now let's add context to this. Um, again, you have to understand what the Beatitudes, where it's coming from, why it was brought out, why this entire Sermon on the Mount was brought out. In order to understand that, you have to have a complete understanding of Christ. The Sermon on the Mount was birthed from Christ. This was Christ's personal testimony, if you will, of the gospel. This was it. If you want to know about Jesus, read the Sermon on the Mount. And in that, he begins to talk to them, to the disciples, and to the crowd that was there with him at the mountain. And he begins to minister from within. Some of the best ministry work you will ever do comes from within, comes from you. Not because of your studying, not because of your big, deep words, but when you testify from your heart, when you talk from your heart, from all that you've got inside of you, when you empty yourself out, that is your best message. And that's why I gave honor to uh, Taylor, April, T.R. and Charlotte, because y'all best ministry, it ain't your singing, it ain't your solos, it ain't your concerts. It's when you do stuff like what you guys did. When you minister to your brother and your sister from a personal place, and you say, I know where you've been, and I'm with you in your pain, but I'm also going to rock with you once you come out of it, and we're going to worship God together. <laughs> that right there is beautiful to God. When I see you guys on a Sunday morning, and y'all are leading praise and worship, and all of a sudden, y'all get lost in praise and worship. You get lost in the worship, <laughs> and you ignore the people. You shut the people out, you shut the congregation out, and it's just you and God, and the people see it, and they follow it, and it's beautiful. It's because God is taking you into a personal space, and that's what this is for Christ. Christ brought these folks into a personal space, and he preached this message from his heart, from his inside, and what was that message? It was a message of rejection. It was a message of rejection. Go back through the Beatitudes and read it. He's blessing folks who have been rejected. 
and he's blessing people in this beatitude who have been rejected. <laughs> Read it. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst out the righteousness, for they shall be filled. And now we get to number seven. Oh, number seven. Number seven is important. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Number seven is important. Again, the Bible is specific for a reason. This is the only beatitude that does not have a payoff separate in and of itself. The poor in spirit, they get the kingdom. The mourners, they get comforted, the Holy Ghost. The meek, they get the earth. Those which are hungry and thirsty, they get filled. <laughs> the merciful, they get mercy. The merciful didn't inherit the earth. The merciful didn't get the kingdom of heaven. The merciful don't get comforted. The merciful don't get filled. The merciful obtain mercy. This is the only beatitude where you see something like that. Where it is a true, where it's a true if then scenario. If you are merciful, you get mercy. If you want mercy, be merciful. This is the only beatitude where you'll see that. But why is that? This scripture fulfills what God has said from the beginning. Uh, when you go back, as a matter of fact, when you go forward a little bit into, again, the Lord's Prayer. See, the Lord's Prayer ties into virtually any and everything that I'm probably going to be teaching on uh, throughout this entire thing. <laughs> Because it does. It is so universal. In Matthew 6, 9, 13, uh, the Lord's Prayer, Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or as some say, forgive us our debts as we forgive. <laughs> It's interesting because in that clause, you are you are signing a contract with God. You're telling God that as long as I forgive people, you have the right to forgive me. But if I don't forgive people, God, you also have the right to not forgive me. As long as I'm showing folks mercy, God, I'm giving you the right to show me mercy. But God, if I'm not being merciful to people, I'm also giving you the right to not show mercy. But here's the cool thing about it. God in all of his sovereignty decided to show you mercy anyway. Even though out of your mouth, you are saying, forgive us our debts as we forgive. God said, I'm going to show you mercy anyway. How do I know that? Easily, I'm going to show you. Go to Romans 12. If you have your Bible or electronic device or however you pull up your Bible, telepathically, whatever you use to pull up your Bible, go to Romans 12. Because I want you to see this. I really want you to see something here. Think about it. In, in, in Matthew 6, 9, 13, you said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. <laughs> Romans 12. Uh, let's see. Do this differently here. Mm -hmm. I just want to pull this up. Okay. 
different way. There we go. Hey, Lisa, so thankful for Nelson and happy Friday. Um, Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 1. Because I need you to understand um, that God gave you mercy irrespective to what you said or did. And it's beautiful. Uh, if you read it from, let's see which translation it is. The one I want to use here. Hey, this boy. My wife, her is cute. I like her. She is cute. That's my wife. Actually, no, yeah, we'll do the NIV. Romans 12, 1. NIV. So let me go back up to that here because I really want to make this clear and I don't mind taking that time to make this, this clear. Well, first we'll start with the King James. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your, which is your reasonable service. Now, take that in the NIV. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice. I'm going to stop there for a second, because look how the sentence is structured again. The word of God is specific. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies. What he is saying in this case is looking at the mercy that God has given you because of God's mercy, the least you can do is present your body as a living sacrifice. That's why he's saying it. He's saying Looking at God's mercy, there's another version that says, in full view of God's mercy, I urge you to present your body as a living sacrifice. I, it's amazing when people talk about karma. You know, karma's coming for you, man. Listen, what goes around comes around. I don't know. Because there's a lot of stuff that went around that never came back to me. Hey, Tony, good morning. There's a lot of stuff that I sent around that ain't came around to me. Why? Because of the mercy of God. In full view of his mercy, there was a lot of stuff that I put out that did not come back to me. See, that's why you got to be careful telling folks about karma. What comes around, goes around. What goes around, comes around. That's not necessarily the case. There's a lot of stuff that you have put out into the world that did not come back to you. There's a lot of stuff that you sent out there to the world that God blocked it from coming back to you. Bishop, good morning. Good morning. Be careful with talking about karma. It's not what goes around, comes around. A lot of the mess that as sinners we put out there, Jesus blocked it. That's why the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Blocked a lot of that mess with the cross. Even though you put it out there, Jesus said, I'm not letting it be charged. He said, I'm not going to let it be charged to you. What goes around can get stopped by Jesus. Stopped a lot of it. Blocked a lot of it. Held back a lot of it. Could you imagine? In, in, in dealing with karma, what if God... <laughs> Could you, just think about that. What if God said what goes around comes around. If karma were true in that respect, Christ had no need to die. 
because we are all doomed to hell then. If what goes around comes around, we don't have a prayer. But my God is greater than your karma. Because <laughs> again, there's so much stuff that I've sent out into this world that blocked, that got blocked at the cross. Before I was even formed in the belly. <laughs> God blocked a lot of mess from coming back to me. Stuff that I didn't even commit. Stuff that wasn't even on my account. That was from my parents and my parents' parents, my parents' parents' parents. Generational stuff. God blocked it. That's why this verse says, therefore, in full view of God's mercy, in full view of everything that he's done for you, and in full view of everything that he did not do to you, I urge you to present your body as a living. This is a plea. In full view of God's mercy. And yeah, I'm still dealing with Matthew 5, 7. Blessed are the merciful for they show the mercy. But we got to get a full concept of what mercy is. It, I don't know if you guys watch HGTV as much as me and my wife do. We watch HGTV a ton. Tell me. Uh, so I'm watching HGTV. There was this one episode of Property Brothers, and this one family, uh, they bought a house, and the one, the contractor brother, was working on the house, and he noticed when they stripped the walls down that there was old wiring in the house, and he had to deliver bad news to the family, and he tells them, he says, um, all of this wiring that the contractors did before is way out of code. It is so dangerous that at any moment, had you turned on a light switch in this house, had you plugged in a hairdryer or something, you could have burned your entire house down that you just bought. He was like, we gotta replace all of this wiring. I told him, good morning, yo, to be. Told him, it's gonna cost you about $12,000. He said, unfortunately, this is the part that you don't get to see the benefits of, but it's there. That's how mercy is. Mercy is the electrical wiring in your house. Nobody, nobody comes into your house if you're selling your house. Nobody comes into your house and says, let me look at your wiring. But they thank God that is there. Mercy adds nothing to your stature per se, but it keeps you. See, here's the difference between grace and mercy. Grace leads. This is the best, one of the best ways I can think to describe it. Grace leads the way, clearing a path for you setting up water and food for you along the way. Grace leads the way. Mercy follows. Okay? Grace leads the way. Grace goes in front of you. Grace is in front, not behind. Grace sets out nice things for you. Grace sets up a place for you to rest. Grace, that's what grace is. Mercy follows you. Mercy watches your back. That's why the word of God says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Mercy follows. Mercy makes sure that nothing comes up behind you. That whole what goes around comes around thing. Mercy. What goes around? Mercy. What goes around? Mercy. Mercy. Because there's a lot of stuff that could get charged to you had mercy not been in place. This is why I tell people that there is a huge, massive, incredibly large difference between grace and mercy. They are not twins. Don't refer to them as twins. They have never been twins. They have two totally separate functions. Grace leads the way. Mercy follows to make sure you don't get shot in the back. That's what mercy is. Yeah, mercy is the lookout. 
<laughs> Mercy is is you remember y'all remember growing up? I'm I grew up in the hood. Uh and somebody would do a favor for you that you didn't even know. And what was the thing that you already saw? What was the one thing you already saw? Oh man, good looking out. It's mercy. You didn't even know it at that time because you were kids, but they showed you mercy because they took care of an issue for you that you may not have even known existed. It's mercy. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm going to give you, a, a, this is the most harrowing example of mercy that I can think of. Matter of fact, go to Lamentations. I know who goes to Lamentations. Go to Lamentations. Because I, I want you to I want you to see something here. This is one of the most emotional things I could ever recall seeing in the Word of God. Go to Lamentations 3. to see this entire thing. We'll get down to the, to the good part, but you need to understand why in Lamentations 3, 23, that it says, uh, it is by the mercies of God that we are not consumed. And that sounds good. Thank God that by the mercies of God, we are consumed. I'm grateful for that. And that's, that's awesome. But but, 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 you need to understand the context of why he said it is by the mercies of God that we are not consumed. So in Lamentations 3, 1, he says, I am one. Good morning, Auntie Bell. He says, I am one who knows what it is to be punished by God. He drove me deeper and deeper into darkness and beat me again and again with merciless blows. He's talking about God. He left my flesh open and raw and has broken my bones. He has shut me in a prison of misery and anguish. He has forced me to live in the stagnant darkness of death. He has bound me in chains. I am a prisoner with no hope of escape. I cry aloud for help, but God refuses to listen. I stagger as I walk. The stone walls blocked me wherever I turned. He waited for me like a bear. He pounced on me like a man. We're talking about God. He chased me off the road, tore me to pieces and left me. He drew his bow and made me the target for his arrows. He shot his arrows deep into my body. People laugh at me all day long. I'm a joke to them all. Bitter suffering is all he has given me for food and drink. He rubbed my face in the ground and broke my teeth on the rocks. And I've forgotten what health and peace and happiness are. I do not much longer to, I do not have much longer to live. My hope in the Lord is gone. The thought of my pain, my homelessness, is bitter poison. I think of it constantly and my spirit is depressed. <laughs> Yet hope returns when I remember this one thing. <laughs> he was going through an episode of depression. See, this is why I tell people it's okay to be mad at God. He can take it. He's a big boy. God can handle you being angry at him. God can handle you feeling like it's his fault. God can handle you feeling like he's causing it all. And right here he says, yet hope returns when I remember this one thing. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continue. And actually I'm going to go to the uh, King James version of it here. We go down to 22 or 21. It says, This I recall in my mind in verse 21. This I recall in my mind, therefore I have hope. It is through the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. 
They are new every morning. Great is our faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is a good man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Now you see the context of that scripture. It's by the mercies of God that we are not consumed. <laughs> because basically what he's saying is as much as God has afflicted him, he didn't kill him. As much as he thought God punished him, tortured him, he didn't kill him. God had ample reason to wipe us out. God had ample reason to shut this world down again. God had ample reason to say, I don't need to send Jesus because they're not going to get it right. But the only thing keeping us from an eternal damnation is his mercy. The only thing keeping us from a fiery grave is his mercy. The only thing keeping us from being eternally lost is God's mercy. Therefore, Romans 12, 1, in full view of this mercy, now that you've understood that his mercy went from Lamentations 3, 1 all the way down to 3, 20, therefore, in full view of that, Therefore, in full view of God's mercy, which follows you all the days of your life, therefore, in full view of God's mercy, which is everlasting, therefore, in full view of God's mercy, I urge you, I beg you, I plead with you, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your least that you can do. That is your act of worship. That is your reasonable service. And your reward for that is you get mercy. <laughs> Think about this. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful. Watch this. Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Hey, teacher Nikki. He said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. But remember, I just told you in Psalm 23 that goodness and mercy shall follow you. Remember that example, grace leads, mercy follows. Grace clears the path and makes it comfortable, makes, uh, makes bread and water for you and, and a nice bed on the way grace leads mercy is the lookout to make sure you don't get shot in the back remember all that stuff about what goes around comes around mercy stopped a lot of that from coming back around to you a lot of the things that you committed in your past mercy blocked it from coming back around to you that's why i tell people be careful talking about karma karma ain't it because if karma happened we'd all be done what goes around God has blocked it in your life. A lot of the stuff that we've done, God has blocked it from coming back around. How? Through his mercy. It's the mercy of God that you are not consumed. Consumed by what? By your own self, by your own sinful pleasures, by your own lust, by your own affections toward the things of this world. God blocked it. Therefore, in full view of God's mercy, I urge you to be merciful for you will obtain mercy. So now what has God done? God has taken that mercy that was in the back, that was behind you. And now through Jesus Christ, now mercy is, now mercy is also in front of you. Mercy was behind you all this time, watching your back taking care of you when stuff wasn't lining up right with the way <sighs> wow 
while we were yet sinners. For God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinning, Jesus Christ comes and dies. That mercy now went in front of us. None of us were around when Jesus died. None of us were there at the cross. None of us were there when he was on trial. None of us were there when they mocked him. None of us were there when they beat him. None of us were there when they traded palm leaves for rocks. None of us were there. We weren't there. And he died anyway. While we were yet sinners, he died anyway. Let it sink in for a moment. Let that sink in. We weren't even there. And he died. Why? Because Christ took that mercy that was behind us. And now he put it in front of us. And he said it in Matthew 5. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. For those who are merciful, is coming. His. How do I know that mercy is in front? The Bible says, not grace. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Why? Why do I know that? Go back to Limitations three. Told you we gonna we gonna mess up today. <laughs> Lamentations 3.22, it is through the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. 23, they are new every morning. Great is our faithfulness. His mercy is, Jesus, his mercy is now leading the way. <laughs> that same mercy that's watching your back is now in the front cutting a path for you that says I know you are capable of blowing the whole operation I know that you are capable of self-sabotage I know and I've already made provision see as they say grace gives you what you don't deserve mercy doesn't give you what you do deserve and it's more to mercy than just that. I hope now you see that. Mercy watched your back all this time. And now mercy has stepped in front of you and said, I'm going to start making provision. Just in case, I'm going to start making extra inroads for you. Just in case, I'm going to have a ram over there for you, Abraham. Just in case, I'm going to make sure you have enough nails, Noah. Just in case, Moses, I'm going to give you this rod. You probably don't think it's much, but you don't have it there. Just in case, mercy was right there leading the way. It's mercy. It's the mercies of God that you are not consumed it's by his mercy. Therefore, again, going back to Romans 12, 1, therefore, in full view of God's mercy, I beg you to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Therefore, in full view of God's mercy, I urge you to be merciful for it, for you will obtain mercy. That's why mercy and grace are separate. See, I don't I don't talk much about grace. Everybody loves grace. And that's great. I love grace as well. I thank God for his grace. I love God's grace. I love the grace of God. But you better appreciate the mercy of God. <laughs> you better understand God's mercy. Not mercy.
mercy is more than just fire insurance. It's the mercy of God that kept his hand from dropping on his, his left hand. The mercy of God stayed his hand from pinning down our entire generation and generations to come. It was his mercy that withheld his judgment. It was his mercy. It's why you're still here. It's why you got another shot at it. For all that I've said, they come short of the glory of God. It was his mercy. It's his mercy. Blessed are the merciful. Good morning, Charlie. <clears throat> Blessed are the merciful. You want mercy? Show it. You want mercy? Get it. You want mercy? Live it. You want mercy? Extend it to those who don't feel like they have it. One of the greatest gifts, one of the greatest gifts you can give to somebody is mercy. One of the greatest gifts you can extend to somebody is mercy when they don't listen when they don't deserve it when they don't deserve it mercy to those who are uh, playing on to racial racial fears and stuff mercy can you do it To those who constantly rebut Black Lives Matter with All Lives Matter, mercy, can you do it? To those who still shout racial epithets, can you do it? Mercy. Mercy. To those who lie on you, can you do it? Mercy. Folks who don't like you, I mean, really don't like you, mercy, can you do it? <laughs> mercy, can you do it then? And we're going to get into that part about folks scandalizing you and, 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 and messing with you and all that stuff. We, we're about to get down into that in the, in the latter parts of the Beatitudes, but yeah, mercy, can you do it? Can you do it? They put some stuff out there against you and you were hoping that it would come back around and hit them. But the same mercy that blocked your mess from hitting you, can you do it? Mercy. Because you said, in the, again, Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts, God, as we forgive. Can you do it? Mercy. Not gonna let you get away with it. I can't get away with it. I can't get away with it. I've got to show folks mercy. I don't have a choice. I've got to show mercy. I don't have an option. I've got to show mercy. I don't have another way. When folks wrong me, I've got to show mercy. I've got to. Because God showed me mercy. Here's the benefit. Mercy is everlasting. There's no expiration date on mercy. The Bible says it. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. His mercy is everlasting. Pastor Donnell, good morning, sir. His mercy is everlasting. Not his grace. Again, something I always talk about. Grace is not an everlasting thing. <laughs> the Bible specifically, again, the Bible is specific for a reason. The Bible says that grace is sufficient, which means it should hold you. 
and said, I remember my dad used to give me an allowance, me and my brother an allowance. And uh, when I was younger, he would give me $10. My brother would get $15. We were like maybe nine and 12 at the time, whatever. My brother would get 15, I'd get 10. And my dad would say, that should hold you. I knew that that $10 wasn't going to stretch me until the end of my days. I'm not 43 now and holding on to that same $10 like I got two bucks left. This should last me till my retirement. No, no. Grace sustains. It's sufficient, but mercy covers. Mercy covered you. Mercy covered your back. Mercy watched your six. For those military folks, mercy watched your six. That whole what goes around comes around. It didn't. Because mercy was right there watching your back. Mercy was right there protecting you. It's by his mercy that you weren't shot in the back like a dog on the street. It was his mercy that watched you while somebody tried to stab you in the back and they missed. It was his mercy. It was his mercy. And it's only by his mercy that you ain't consumed. That's why in the Bible it says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. God forbid. Why? Because your grace, your grace can run out. The word of God says that you are given the measure of grace. You've received a measure of, you have a certain amount of grace and it's a lot and it should hold you. It should. But you can run out of that. And the Bible specifically talks about that. It says those are ones who are given over to what's called a reprobate mind. And now, all you have is the mercy of God. Ain't no more blessing. You are just alive and functioning off the mercy of God. Lastly, mercy is not comfortable. It's not intended to feel comfortable. Mercy is not intended to feel good to the person giving it or to the person receiving it. Mercy is not a feel-good thing. Again, this is the only beatitude in the beatitudes where the payoff is the same as the purpose. All of the other ones have some feel-good thing attached to the end. The poor in spirit, oh, wow, they get the kingdom. The meek, wow, they get the earth. They inherit the earth. Merciful? No. You just get mercy. Just get mercy. See? That's a hard scripture. <laughs> mercy. Mercy is not a good feeling. But you show that appreciate it. Sure, better appreciate mercy. Because again, it is by his mercy that we are not consumed. Only because of his mercy. I thank God for his grace, but I show enough thank him for his mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Again, mercy used to watch your back. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Psalms 23. Truly goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Mercy followed you because it watched your back and watched your six. But now, <clears throat> in Matthew 5, 7, he says, Matthew 5, 7, he says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Meaning, going forward, if you show mercy, you're going to get mercy. Now, mercy has switched from the back to the front. It's still watching your back, but now it has taken up residence in the front. Now, mercy is helping lead you. Mercy is going ahead of you now, making provision for the stuff. Watch this for the stuff that it knows you're going to do wrong. How do I know that? 
while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Be merciful so you can obtain mercy. Show mercy so you can obtain mercy. Therefore, in the full view of God's mercy, I urge you that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, your act of worship. In full view of everything God blocked from coming back on you. By faith, Jesus had to assume he who knew, the Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin by faith. So that in that same manner of faith, we could become the righteousness of God. Jesus had to, by faith, pick up sin so that by faith we can obtain righteousness. So therefore, in full view of all that God has done for you, of all that Christ has done for you, of all the Holy Spirit is doing in you, be merciful. When you see your brother or sister take a hit, be merciful. When they take a fall, be merciful. Don't be so quick to snap back. Don't be so quick to clap back. Don't be so quick to judge. Be merciful. That's why the Bible says, be slow, be slow with your wrath, with your anger. Slow up. Show mercy. Who haven't you shown mercy to? Who is it? That, who's that person? Who, who are they? Who's that person that when they talk, it just grates on your nerves? Who is that person in your life? That every time you see him, you're frustrated, you're irritated, you're agitated, you just want to choke him out. Who's that person? Who is it? Think of me, don't, don't type it in here. But think of that person. Who's that person? Who's that? Who's that guy? Who's that girl? Who's that coworker? Who's that family member? Who's that best friend? Who's that church member? Who is it? Show him mercy. Karma cannot compete with God. It's a non-starter. Because a lot of stuff that went around from you didn't come back to you. On Calvary's cross, Jesus Christ accepted the charges against you. He who knew no sin accepted your charges. Everything that was charged to your account, everything that was coming back to you, Jesus snatched it and put it on the cross with him. Everything. Everything that you went through, everything that you went through that you did, that you messed up, that you screwed up, that you jacked up, everything that you did. Before it came back to you, Jesus Christ snatched it. And what did he say when he got on the cross? Father, forgive him. Father, show him mercy. They don't even know what they do. And that's mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall turn with, for they shall obtain mercy. That's my prayer today. That we be merciful. That we be merciful. For how can we love God who we have not seen? But not love our brother whom we see every day. This is the beatitude, which is a warning. It's a warning shot to the believer. Be merciful. You are blessed if you're merciful. Why? 
because God is still being merciful to you. And he will continue to do so. So I pray today that we begin to show mercy. The church, we have got to start showing mercy again. In full view of all the mercy that God has given us. I pray that we begin to show that to the world. Show mercy to the world. Let them see our hearts again. Well, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for not consuming us. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, for blocking so many things that we sent out into this world. We thank you that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's your mercy, God. It's, it's your mercy. Thank you for putting this in your sermon, Father, about mercy. I thank you for putting this in there. Thank you because you had us in mind. When you sent Jesus to die on a rugged cross, you had us in mind. And you knew that we still wouldn't believe. We still wouldn't follow you. We'd still be hard-headed. We'd still have the panic attacks. We'd still have the nervous breakdowns. We'd still have our angry moments. We'd still have our mood shiftings. But you still sent Jesus ahead of us as you have mercy not only watch our back but now go in front of us and it's by that mercy that we are not consumed therefore God in full view of your mercy we will present our bodies a living sacrifice in Jesus name amen um, I hope that this lesson has um has helped you have a better understanding of what that scripture means. Um, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. It's important that we acknowledge the mercy that God has given us. It's important. Um, and in full view of that mercy, we should extend mercy to people. We should extend mercy to ourselves. Forgive yourself first. You ain't no good forgiving other people if you can't forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for all the mess that you put out there. That's what that's what Paul said, I wronged no man. <laughs> Saul did. But once he got converted over to Paul, he said, I'm a new creation. I ain't wrong anybody. He had to forgive himself first. As a believer, forgive yourself. Show mercy to yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Forgive yourself. Even as Christ has forgiven you. Forgive yourself. Show mercy to you. To, this is your assignment today. After I'm on the air or whatever, just if you have a second, Go into the bathroom, look in the mirror, grab your cell phone, turn on your camera or whatever, and say to yourself, you know what? I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you for the hurt that you've caused me. I forgive you for the hurt that you've caused people. I forgive you. Forgive yourself today. Take time to show yourself mercy today for whatever you've done that self-sabotaged you all of these years. Forgive yourself. Start there. And then forgive others. And watch the mercy of God keep you. Amen. Um, I will look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Because now the Beatitudes take a turn. Now that we've got mercy covered, now the Beatitudes are about to take a turn. Turn for, for even the more, even the better. I look forward to talking with you all tomorrow morning. Uh, may God bless you. May God keep you all. Until we meet again tomorrow about six, you know, six ish, somewhere around there. Love you guys. Listen, have a great Friday. You made it to the weekend by the mercy of God. <laughs>
Ladies, <laughs> again, God bless you. Love you.